Tech is braced with ICA ARS 2022. Department of Robotics and Automation Engineering of PSG College of Technology conducted the third international conference on advancements in automation, robotics and sensing ICA ARS 2022 on Friday. The inaugural ceremony of the conference was presided over by the chief guest Johan Olofsson, Global Head LAP Peak Cables. Subsequently, the release of the conference proceedings was accompanied by Bayan Nanda Kumar, Executive Vice President, Fanac India Private Limited, Dr. M. Ramalingam, Robotics Surgeon, and Dr. K. Prakasan, Principal, PSG College of Technology. The international conference intends to provide a better platform for the conference of experts to share the most current practice and knowledge in the field of robotics and automation, which holds the lofty promise of creating a better future for the world. The conference discusses the innovations and presentations for publications on automation, robotics and sensing for divergent industrial, medical and cognitive sectors. Arjun Prakash, Director, Effica Automation Limited, inaugurated the conference exhibition where various robotic apparatus of classified industries were displayed in the conference exhibition. To be here to witness this galaxy of uh, luminaries from industry and academia, practicing consultants. The moment you say robotics, many other uh, fields of uh, knowledge comes into the mind. Maybe AI, ML, virtual reality, augmented reality, whether we want or not, we get through all this. So every part of life is influenced by these thoughts, including the worry of parents for their children's education. Which brand you select? Today, civil engineering or mechanical engineering or computer science, of course, answer will be always computer science. So it has swept over the society all over the world about the future of uh, mankind. But it is not so, it is not the way we think. In 2018, we attended a meeting from one of the big software company, the technical meet with all the academicians. So the presentation was about Google autonomous car. I don't know the exact uh, word they used. So they have launched a vehicle and they were presenting on that. So next to me, there was an academician from Delhi, a very senior academician from a great university. They put a question. See, what is the legal aspect of this machine when it goes in the road and it gets into a problem? It left there, we didn't discuss that. I'm just putting a thought on you. IoT, IIoT, then the lot of things, healthcare, smart physical, cyber physical systems, many things have been evolved over a period of time, ever since the emergence of uh, internet. It has created jobs, it has created new avenues of research, it is great. There is a book, it is the Machines of Loving Grace, written by John Markov, a famous uh, journalist in US. So he talks about the polarization of the world when automation comes in or computing comes in. But the review of this book by several people, I think the another correlation of this will be the film Modern Times by uh, Charlie Chaplin. Many of us would have seen it. It's a repercussion on the social life. He connects this with uh, Peter Drucker. If Peter Drucker were alive today, who lived during 1909 to 2005, an Austrian-American consultant, a humanist, a philosopher, he is a person of very high reputation and thought for humanity. He has told, automation is not a panacea for everything, at the same time it is not a catastrophe also for the humanity. Both will go hand in hand. So what it brings in is the lifelong learning. When you construct a dam, there will be displacement of uh, inhabitants. So you have to relocate. So it is, the, it is the duty of the society to see that they are safe, they are moved to another place. Same way, when the technology sweeps our society, 
people who are equipped with the knowledge they get the boost people who are not having that particular uh, opportunity they have to be taught that is a german family owned global company who uh, manufactured connectivity products we are mostly known for a product uh, called earthex which has been the industry standard of uh, cables in the industry for more than 60 years we serve a market that we, in general terms, call the, the machine building market and plant automation. <clears throat> and traditionally we own the cable market, the, the control cable market. Uh, but now our portfolio consists of many advanced products and services, also for <coughs> industrial networks. Robotics and, and automation is the key for labs growth in the global market. And we continue to uh, launch new products and services in the market. We have launched also a new service called Earthex Connect or the wire harness business where we develop and manufacture unique assemblies to make the players in the global automation market in various segments like internal logistics or traditional robotic manufacturers. The Indian industrial automation market itself is valued at 10.7 billion US dollars in 2021. It's forecasted to grow up to maybe 23.1 billion US dollars by 2027. That's an annual growth of 14%. And India government is, is with its positive policies, I think, will further drive this automation development in India specifically. We heard about the artificial intelligence and uh, I think that's right now at the course of, of these future opportunities and India has the capability to place itself amongst the pioneers of AI globally, I think. India today is seen as number six worldwide when it comes to investments and fundings in AI. Uh, another study I read was published by McKinsey Analytics in December 2021 and that highlighted that India was the leading adopter of AI among emerging economies from a commercial and business point standpoint. This combined with the IIoT, the smart manufacturing, smart supply chain, smart agriculture, and the future would be extremely interesting for all of us, I think. And I would like to address all the students in this room. I would like to say to you, please make the world a better place. You have all the tools, you have all the skills, you have all the opportunities to make this happen. It's for sure a lot of hard work. It will be a lot of obstacles, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, I'm sure. But I would like to finish by, by uh, quoting Mr. Dodd Hammarskjöld. He was a Swedish um, guy. He was the Secretary General of the United Nations from 1953 to 1961. And he, he once said, never measure the heights of a mountain until you reach the top then you will see all over the post. I wish you all two successful days here at PST. Thank you very much. And uh, only 9% in Japan, 7% in US, 6 in Korea, and uh, close to just 1% in India. But, but, uh, nothing wrong here, but still very positive. Our growth was 50% over the previous year. So that's very positive for us. As far as the robot density, what we call number of robots used in industry compared to number of employees. Korea leads with 932 robots per 10,000 employees in the world, followed by Singapore about 605. Japan 390 plus and 370 in Germany. Global average is about 126. Coming to India, we are about seven robots per 10,000 employees. But again, we have to look at this as a great opportunity for us for robotization. As far as the industry segment where uh, these robots are used today, uh, most of them are. Automotive industry currently, but
But very recently, uh, electronic manufacturing and EMS are uh, making a great inroads. So we can see a lot of robots coming into EMS and EV industries very shortly. It's already happening today. Applications where the robots are used are uh, handling, uh, MIG welding, and spot welding. So this is where the largest number of robots used. Uh, as you can see, these growing numbers, which are uh, still growing, there are a lot of demands for robots. Fanuc is a company manufacturers of uh, industrial robots. We enhanced our production by almost. 70% uh, last financial year of our capacity and we are working on increasing our production capacity by another 40% this year. In spite of this, uh, the delivery time of robots today are you know, close to 8 months. So that's the huge demand still we have. If you wonder how uh, this much of production capacity can be increased uh, within a short period, 70% and another 40%. In case of Fanuc, it's so easy, it's just by adding more and more robots into our plants, manufacturing plants. Today, uh, some of the manufacturing plants in uh, our factories in Japan are 100% run by only robots. We call it as a no man, no light factory. So they can run even for one month without any intervention of human beings. Just level of automation possible uh, on two or three points which are very major. One, uh, which is of course we have touched on vision systems and force sensors. These technologies are integrated with robot to make it uh, very flexible and intelligent apart from using AI functions. In addition to that, uh, the IoT, what we are talking today, I think the last five, six years we have been talking so much. Fanuc has been uh, using this technology for more than two decades in our factories and then collecting data, then predicting the failures and then attending to them before even the failure happens. And finally, which is the most important aspect is that uh, the reliability of our products. If the products are not so reliable, we cannot have uh, automated factories. So if I have just given an idea, our robots today in industry, the mean time between failure is about 9 years plus. So that means to say it should not fail. The reducer's life in uh, robots are about only 8 years. Having said all that, uh, situation in India today, of course automotive uh, is the major drive for automation, even today. And uh, the changes what we are seeing is that some of the tier 1 vendors to the major automotive OEMs, in fact, they crossed uh, by having more number of robots than the OEM today. So the tier 1 vendors are interesting. In addition to that, even the general industries, uh, like companies over here, some of them I can see, so they have started using robots about 5-6 years before, and today they have more than 100 plus robots in their factories. There's a need for uh uh, animal lab and they were all receptive and then uh, under my uh, continued uh, pressure and uh, the then principal uh, Dr. Ramalingam could convince the management and get a world class animal lab here through which we can train the people in laparoscopy and even in the future uh, robotic training can be undertaken. So that's a big progress and we have conducted many conferences uh, like uh, international conferences in neurology, urogynecology, and uh, many reconstructive surgeries. So we started the laparoscopic down on effective here. Previously it used to be by open cut operation, but now we are doing by laparoscopy. So, so many progresses are happening. But in around 2015, I had a passion how we are going to train the people in robotic. That was the time it was uh, getting into the international uh, scenario when it was at, uh, San Francisco, the people at the age of even 70, Jap Japanese were trying to learn robotics. So why not our young generation, the huge clinical material here in India, cannot manufacture the trainer and if possible even the real surgical robot. So along with uh, Dr. Vinod, we could uh, uh, sign an MOU 
uh, with the central government, uh, guided by uh, my very uh, close friend, Mr. Krishnamurti from LTTS. Uh, thank you very much for coming here, sir. And uh, uh, we could carry out the uh, project for nearly eight years with a partial improvement. It just needs a fine tuning. Though it is recognized by the central government as one of the best projects, I will not take the credit until we finish it as a product to be used by the uh, surgeons. So we are, recently we have acquired the HLNC logo uh, in BJMSR. So in the near future, we are going to see a lot of uh, robotic surgeries are going to happen. So all this uh, motivation uh, comes from the encouragement given by the management. So now I have something to share with you. A BMW car or a, a high-end uh, uh, luxury cars are not that expensive when compared to surgical robot. It costs something like 16 crores to 20 crores. I don't know why it should cost so much. Why the brains in India cannot manufacture a surgical robot much cheaper. So the Chinese are able to do it much cheaper and uh, we have so much of talent here in India and why we can't think about it and, and make a surgical robot affordable to healthcare system that's very much needed here because the Indian uh, population is that uh, only about 10% of the people insure the rest of the 90% of the people don't get insurance so they can't afford suddenly if you want a robotic surgery for the kidney cancer you have to shell out nearly 4 lakhs how an average person or your own driver can afford to better robotic surgery? My dream is that we should offer the state of art surgery to the needy people at an affordable cost. So this is the uh, idea I am throwing to the uh, end bunch of researchers why we can't think about making it our own. They say even for a micro uh, sensor we have to import from Germany. Why it cannot be manufactured here in an institution? so huge like this here. So think about it, what are the components that can be manufactured and how can we uh, motivate or uh, give pressure to the management why it can't be made as a center of uh, research excellence. It all, uh, somewhere we have to start. So we can't be buying the medical equipments, 90% of the uh, high quality equipments we are importing. How much of uh, our currency is going abroad? Not that we should not buy, but at least in the time to come, we have to uh, start doing the research in a real, uh, uh, sincere way and committed, dedicated, and we have to really uh, achieve that one. This is my humble request to the young researchers, both the faculty and the students.